Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we have a puzzle called Avada Kedavra by Philip Huber. Um, Avada Kedavra, of course, from the Harry Potter books. So um, yeah, it seemed a very appropriate puzzle to try today, given that we have just released our video walkthrough of our Sudoku puzzle hunt. Um, now that came out just over a month ago and I'm revealing no secrets by saying that it was obviously themed on Harry Potter and the Horcruxes. So um, if you haven't seen the video, do check it out. It's available to all our $3 patrons over on Patreon. Also today, actually, we have just released um, a new puzzle hunt uh, by Joka van Wienendaal. Uh, that is available free. Um, so if you are into your puzzle hunts, um, do get over to our Patreon page where you can download it. And it's it's a very nice set of three puzzles. Um, definitely, definitely worth uh, worth your time, I think. Um, now, this, uh, this puzzle has an interesting backstory. Um, some of you who've watched our video walkthrough for the Stoku puzzle hunt already will have noticed and have noticed because we've seen in the comments that you've noticed that um, unintentionally there is a blooper moment in the video uh, where Mark um, <laughs> Mark basically gets very cross with himself and chastises himself for continually messing up puzzles. And we did not mean to leave that moment in the video. Apologies for that. Um, and some of you well, I think we're wondering why he's getting so cross in the video, given he's hardly even made a start on Helga's Cup, which is the puzzle he's trying at this point, uh, at the point he sort of starts to get annoyed. Well, the reason is the puzzle on the screen. Um, Mark had earlier in the day attempted to solve this puzzle um, in a video and had messed it up. Now, he tells me that um, he told me he just made a silly mistake. Um, now, I am skeptical about this. I have to tell you, I am skeptical. Now, let me tell you why. It's because, um, uh, so he says he's made a silly mistake and I should have a go at the puzzle. That's basically what's happened. Now, normally we can't actually uh, solve puzzles that one or other of us is scheduled to solve because we have been the final test solver. So often the puzzles that you'll see um, in Mark's videos, I have so, so solved before and vice versa. Um, but in this instance, I had not solved uh, Philip's puzzle. Um, so, you know, it does make sense for me to give it a go as well. Um, but Mark telling me that this actually is quite doable. I've just loaded it up on Logic Masters Germany where it's already been published and it has five stars out of five for difficulty. So this cannot be that easy. Um, and I, you know, he did this to me before. You'll, you'll have seen the video, many of you I know, where he told me a puzzle was easy and it was absolutely brutally, brutally hard. Now, this puzzle has five stars out of five for difficulty. So it Hmm. 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 My spider senses are tingling. Anyway, I'm going to have a go at it. I'm. Um, it's got quite an interesting rule set, actually, and we'll see how we get on. Um, so let me let me tell you what the rules are. What we've got is the grey cells in the middle of the grid form a magic square, i.e. all rows, columns and the two diagonals, that's the two main diagonals, must add to the same total. OK, so we've got a magic square in the middle of the grid and we've also got uh, basically a partial killer Sudoku. So inside each uh, dotted box, all numbers have to be different and they have to sum up to the small number in the top left hand side. So these three squares have to sum up to 16. These four squares have to sum up to 22 and you can't repeat a digit in a cage. And apart from that, it's normal Sudoku rules. So do have a go at this. I have no idea what to expect, um, but yeah. Uh, it should be a good puzzle. Um, and uh, yeah, to play the puzzle, you click the link under the video as usual. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, right, let's start with the magic square uh, logic. I know I've been through this before if you've watched the channel a lot, um, but it's worth reiterating in case people are new to the channel. Let's think about the sum of those nine cells. They're obviously going to be all of the numbers from one to nine. If you add those up, you get 45. So if each row and each column of this magic square needs to add up to the same number and there are three rows, obviously each row has to add up to 45 divided by 3. Well, that's 15. Now, we can go further than that, though, uh, with magic squares because we can think about the different characteristics of some of the cells in the magic square. So let's compare. Let's think about this square, for example. 
or this square, or this square, or this square. Now, you can, how many different ways of making 15 is this square party to? Well, it's obviously party to its row and its column. So it's party to two different ways of making 15. Now, contrast that with a corner cell. A corner cell is part of its row, its column, and its diagonal. So each corner cell has to be party to three different ways of making 15. Now, the final cell to think about is the middle cell, because the middle cell is the one that has the sort of the most to do, if you like. It has to deal with its row, its column, and both diagonals. So this cell, uniquely within the magic square, has to be party to four different ways of making 15. Now, if you play around with the numbers, what you'll find is there is only one number that could possibly go in the central square of a magic square and be party to four different ways to make 15, and that is the number five. And that's because five can be associated with the four different ways there are of making 10. So four, six, three, seven, two, eight, and one, nine. Um, now, there's one more thing to note about a magic square, and it's maybe slightly surprising, but what you, what, emerges if you play around with the numbers is that the odd digits that we've not yet placed the one three seven and nine actually have to belong to these four squares and the even cells need to belong to the corner cells and you can see that for example if we think about the number nine how many different ways so if, if we put try and put a nine in the corner for example let's try that nine plus five well to get 15 we're going to have to put one more so how, how else can we make 15 if we're going to use a 9? Well, we need 6 without using 5 and 1. Well, there are only two ways of making 6, 1 plus 5 and 2 plus 4. So we could put the 2 plus 4 here, but there would be no third way of making 15 in these two cells here. So, and you can, do, you can work through it, and it works exactly the same way for the other odd numbers. So basically, we have to put odd numbers into these squares let's do that and these are the even digits so this i know and presumably philip in setting the puzzle was very much expecting me to know this um now 16 in two cells that's seven and nine that removes a seven and nine from here which means this square must be a seven and nine in order to ensure that we have the possibility that the central row of the magic square adds up to 15. Ah, now let's do some arithmetic actually on column six because we've got 16 plus seven, that's 23, plus 15, this column of the magic square must add up to 15. Well, that's 38. So these two squares, must be the difference between 45, which is the sum of the entire column, all of the digits from 1 to 9, and 38. So these two cells sum up to 7. These two cells sum up to 7. Right, okay, so two of the digits, two of the digits in the magic square in this column must also add up to 7 then. Um, because there are three ways of making 7. 3, 4, 2, 5, and 1, 6. And you can see these can't be party to a 7 at all. So we've got a 7 here, a 7 here, and then two of these three squares have got to add up to 7, which means one of them, the other one, must be an 8, because 8 plus 7 is obviously 15. So there is definitely an 8 in one of those two squares, which means there's definitely not an 8 in either of these two squares. Ah, okay, and also, yeah, once we know, once we know that eight is in one of these positions, we know on the diagonal, whichever one of these is the real eight, it's going to have to pass through the five and hit a two on the other side. So one of these two squares must be a two, which means that's nice. So that neither of those two squares is a two. So, so far, we are actually making some logical progress, aren't we? 24 in three cells must be 7, 8, and 9. 14. So, 14 is either 6 and 8 or 5 and 9. Uh, 
Actually, that's interesting. Look, we've got a 15 and a 14. So this two by two is a very large number. If, if, if these two boxes were in the same three by three box, then we could say with certainty that they would have to be five, seven, eight, and nine. In fact, we would know for sure this was a five, nine, and this was a seven, eight. But the thing about them being in different boxes is they could have a repeated digit. Although, ah, that's a bit suspicious, isn't it? We can't, we can't, for example, put nine here and nine here because then there would be nowhere to put a nine in the 24 cage. So you can't repeat in this two by two block. We can't repeat a nine and eight or a seven because if we do, we will break the 24 cage. So if we can't repeat a nine, eight or a seven, oh, bobbins, we can repeat a six. Now nah, we can repeat a six. We could have, we could have eight, nine and two sixes. So we can't actually assume that this is five, nine, seven and eight. That is very frustrating. That's almost useful. Ah, but we do know Given that this this two by two square is either five, nine, seven and eight or eight, nine, six and six, we do know that there's definitely an eight and a nine in this two by two block. There's an eight and a nine in this little region here. So we can't put any more eights and nines in row seven or row eight, or we will have a third eight or nine in those rows. So we can't put eight or nine in those two squares or this square. No eight or nine here. Oh, it's, I mean, the thing is, we could easily have eights and nines up there. This this is not helping. Oh, I thought that was going to be really useful. Um, but no, foiled again. Uh, Ah, the 10 cage. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if this is useful, but these, the way that this 10 cage is built up can't include even numbers. Because if it does, we'll have two even numbers here that have to add up to 10. The remaining two even numbers will also have to add up to 10 because the four even numbers together add up to 20. Obviously six, eight, four, and two. So what if we make that, for example, two, eight, these two squares would have to be four and six. And this square to ensure this run added up to 15 would have to be a five, which it can't be. So this, this is only odd numbers. Obviously can't include a five. No, that's also that's also not how to solve this. Um, unfortunately, I'm now I now really am starting to flounder because none of these cages up here are in any way restricted, or at least not to my mind. Maybe it's this stuff again. Let's come back down here again. So. I'm sorry about this. I can't see how to use that at all. <laughs> oh dear, this is... <laughs> no, again, I'm pretty sure Mr. Goodliffe was having a joke at my expense. I can totally understand him being frustrated at not being able to solve this puzzle. I cannot understand him claiming that this is not too bad this is this is not easy for sure so each of these each of these rows adds up to 15 each of these columns adds up to 15 each of the diagonals the diagonals just cannot be relevant what you could do 
what you could do is almost view this as a window coup look. You could look at you could look at these windows if you like. Now these are these don't have to contain the digits from one to nine. So windoku obviously being a Sudoku variant where these yellow boxes I've highlighted would have to sum up to 45, but here that's not the case. But we would be at, we could at least work out because we know that these four squares add up to 20 because they are the even numbers, we can actually work out the value of these four three by three boxes by adding the cages and then adding 20 on at the end. Now, is that in any way useful? The answer is, of course, no, it's not. At least I don't think it is. So, well, I mean, the only thing I can see that you could do, if you add up all of the purple squares, let, in fact, let me do it, let me do it, that way at least I'm working with something real. So we've got, we've got here we've got 30, 46, um, 70, 86, 93, 108, 122, 144, 154, 170, 182, plus 20 in the middle is 202. Two hundred and two. Is that meant to be shrieking? <laughs> Am I meant to understand what that's telling me? Two hundred and two. Two hundred and two. So, so you can see if we look at the the rest of the grid. I've got 202 in the purples. And again, I'm so sorry if I'm being a bit slow here, but I'm just trying to get my head around whether this is in any way interesting or not. I've got 202 in the purples. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six. So I can I can see how I can work out the value of these squares. That I can see. In fact, let, let's do that because it's all I've got. Let's do this. So what I'm thinking is that I've got 202 in the purples. So I know that the rest of the grid, i.e. all of the green squares, have got to add up to the difference between every single cell in this Sudoku, which is 9 lots of 45, well that's 405, and 202. So that's 203. So the green squares add up to 203. Now. If the green squares add up to 203, one way of representing the value of the green squares is to say that there are three complete um, rows of the grid and three complete columns of the grid. That's six lots of 45, which is 270, minus the cells that are counted twice when we do that calculation, which is those squares. So, so 270 minus 203 is 67. These squares add up to 67. 
is that useful? That is quite high. That is quite high because if if I make each of the yellow squares, if I make this those three squares at the top seven, eight, and nine, and I do the same, well, I can't make this one seven, eight, nine. So, but if I did make each of them seven, eight, nine, though the maximum would be twenty-four times three. Twenty-four times three is seventy-two. So seventy-two is the absolute maximum. But this square cannot be a seven, eight, or a nine. So in fact, one, two, three, four five, six, seven. These eight squares have got to sum up to 62. Now 62 divided by eight is very close to averaging eight. So these have to be quite large numbers. These have to be quite large numbers. So I need to make these yellow squares add up to 62. So 62, if I made, if I made these one, these 24 and these 24, that would be 48. These three would have to add up. 14, that's no restrict, it's not, it's not good enough. Oh, no, no, no. Hang on. I was double counting the five there. So seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, 24. 24 times two is 48. These two squares need to add up to 14 without using five. So if these were seven, eight, and nine, these two would have to be six and eight. This is, this is restricted. I tell you this, this is also a brilliant puzzle. This is so interesting. Even if I can't do it, I am interested in it. And that is... Sixty-two, 62 in eight cells. No, 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 no. I can't... Ah, no, there's something going on here with sevens and nines. Because I can't... I couldn't, for example, put sevens in both of those squares. Because if I do that, I can't, I can't put a seven in the magic square at all. Similarly, I can't put nines... So... So I don't, this doesn't work that I can't use. So if I use, if I try and do, oh, this is unbelievably beautiful. It's unbelievably beautiful. You can't use three nines in the sum. You just can't do it. I could put a nine here and that, so that let's, oh, oh. I now understand it, but I couldn't see it. And now I can see it. How could I put three nines into these positions? How could we do it? It's impossible. You can't do it. The only way of doing it is by completely, you know, you could have a nines in those positions and a nine here. That would, that would work. That would work, except it breaks the magic square. Because once you plonk a nine, wherever you put, if you... You know, when, wherever you put the nine when you're trying to avoid breaking the magic square, it's going to have to be in one of the corners. But as soon as you place a nine in a corner, it removes two positions in sort of the other two rows and columns, if you like. So now I'm left with the task of putting nine. If I want to put two more nines in, where can I put them? I obviously can't put use this square at all because this square will re remove both of the other opportunities. So I have, if I place a nine here, I have to create this pattern and I can't. Oh, this is just beautiful. So, so you can't put three nines or three sevens in this puzzle. You have to put, well, 
the maximum you could have is two nines and two sevens. So if you put two nines and two sevens, that's 32. So I need the other four cells to add up to 30 without using nines and sevens. So, so I have, it has to be three eights and a six. That's the only way you can get there. You can't put more than three eights. You can't put more of th than three of one number into these eight cells. That's pretty obvious, hopefully. And if I put three eights in and I can't use a nine or a seven as my net extra digit, the only other digit I can use is a six. Anything else won't get me high enough. So I now know this is just staggering. I now know the yellow squares are made up of two nines, two sevens, three eights, and a six. <laughs> um, what? Right, okay, this square, look, this square here can't be a seven or a nine, so that has to be a six or an eight. And where, are there any other restrictions that we've got here that are help? Yes, yes, this one, this one has to be the six because it can't be a seven, eight, and nine. So that's a six. That's the only six in the sum, so that must be an eight now. Oh my goodness me, what, what an execution of this idea this is. Mark is a great bobbins talker as well. There is no way this puzzle is easy. Absolutely no way. I can understand an, like a silly mistake with mental arithmetic. That is very possible. Indeed, I may have done it, but... Um, now, okay, so I've still got to put in two more eights, haven't I? So if I've got to put in two more eights, how can I do this? Now this is an eight here. I'm, I'm going to have to put the other eights into those two positions, otherwise you can't do it. Uh, if you make this an eight, you can't put you can't hide an eight here on top of the other six. So the eights must go like this. That means that this fifteen is not seven eight, it must be six nine. That that fills the nines into row seven and row eight. This is unbelievable. So we can't have a third nine in row seven and row eight in the fourteen cage. The fourteen cage has to be six and eight. That means that we're gonna get the magic square. This is two, four, so this must be a nine. This must be a one. We can remove one nine from here, one nine from here. Um, so I've got my three eights and a six. I've now got to put two nines and two, well, this, this has got to be a seven then. Therefore, that's got to be a nine because I need, and now I should have one seven and one nine left to place, which must go here and here. Oh my goodness me. Um, sevens by Sudoku, that's got to be a seven. Uh, sorry, let me just uh, have a look at the stare at this now. There must be an eight in the 22 cage. There must be a seven in the 22 cage as well because of these sevens. So this 22 cage now has 15 in it. It needs seven more. Uh, now, what next? What next? Oh, eights. Where, oh yeah, where does eight go in box three? It can't go in the 10 cage. You can't put an eight in a 10 cage without putting two ones alongside it. And that will obviously repeat a one in the box. So the eight must go here. These two squares now have got to add up to 12. So they're either 3, 9 or 5, 7. Oh, but 3, 7 here means this can't be a 3, 7 pair. So that's got to be, oops, oopsie, sorry. Uh, that's got to be a 1, 9 pair, which means that this can't be 3, 9. This has to be 5, 7. That fixes the three here, that fixes the seven here. And once the three here is fixed, the magic square is completely disambiguated. <sighs> um, okay. 
So these two squares look, I've got to be what, two and six? With six here, we can place them. So there's a six there and a two here. One's got to live in one of these three squares. This eight fixes the eight in the, in the um, whatever this cage is, the 24 cage. The, oh, the eight here fixes the eight six now. Fixes the six nine, fixes the nine seven. Seven must live here. Nine and one is now resolved, look, by this nine down there. In fact, five and seven is now resolved. This, these three squares need to be one, three, and five in some order. Three and five. Ah, this is quite interesting in the 12 cage. We can't put one and three in here because then that would be an eight and would clash. And we can't put one and five in here because then this would be six and clash. So this, Right, this is good. This has to be a 3, 5. Therefore, this has to be a 4 to make 12. This has to be a 1. Uh, now, ooh. Ooh, yeah. 8, 7 here, 8, 7 here. So there must be an 8 and a 7 in this 16 cage. So the 16 cage is a 1, 7, 8 um, triple. This can't be a 1. Must be a one down here. These three squares have got to be two, four, and six in some order. Let's put that in. That one can't be six. So this is a two or a four. Six must live in one of these two squares because of the six there. So six, six gets shoved into the 10 cage. That's lovely because once six is in the 10 cage, we know it must be a one, three, six triple. That's the only way of making 10 once you have to put a six in the sum. So now threes, look, uh, where do we put a three in row one of the grid? It must be in one of these three squares. So this becomes a three, six. Oh. I can just write a six in there. I just didn't spot it. So that must be a three. Two, four, five over here. This has to be a two or a four because of the five there. So we can place the five. One, three, six. So this is two, three, four here. Oh, two must go there now. Four. That becomes a two, six pair. One, seven, eight here. So these two squares have got to be two and five. Is that doable? Not quite. And these two squares have got to be four. A four and nine must, ah, the four, yeah. Four and nine is resolved. That fixes the nine and the seven. That one can't be seven any, ah, this one can't be eight either. So that's a one. Seven, eight pair, which ah, doesn't tell me anything. I'm sure that more of this top line is resolved now. The seven, eight there is fixed. Must be able to place eights in the grid now. There's so many eights dotted around everywhere. In fact, I've done the eights. Have I done the nines? No, I can place a nine here. Ooh. That is the last nine though. So I've done eights and nines. I've done sevens. Have I done sixes? No, I haven't done sixes. Sixes has got to be in one of these two squares. And up here somewhere, and up here somewhere. Looking down this column, we need one and four into those two positions. And that's lovely. That fixes the seven cage now. This must be two five. I don't know the order, but that must be a three, therefore. 16 cage here. These two squares have got to add up to seven. This can't be a one then. The one must go there because if this was a one, that would shift to being a six. That plonks three and five into those two positions. That locks a five into one of those two squares. 
So this has got, ah, this is interesting. Look, one, two, and five here. So what are the options for this square in order to be, ah, it can't be six either. This has to be a three or a four, I think, which means this has to be a three or a four and it can't be a three. So that's a four, that's a three. The four fixes the four and the one. That fixes the one over on this side. This this square here, look, if we look at the row, we still need to place 2, 3, and 5 into this square, but there's a 2, 5 in the columns. So we get the 3, the 3, 5, the 5, and the 2. This has got to be a 1, 2 pair. So this has got to be a 4, 5 pair, which is resolved. That's a 4 by Sudoku. Um, oh, these two have still got to add up to 7. But they, they must be 2 and 5, and with the 5 here we can fix that. So this becomes 2 and 3. These two squares have got to be 4 and 6. That plonks the 6. Oh, it's going to finish. Is that it? Have I done it? Yes! Oh, what a puzzle that is, Philip. That is unbelievable. My goodness, the... I don't know if that was the way I was meant to do that, but I am very, very proud to have found this idea around these nine cells here. That was really, really gorgeous. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what I missed, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And now I guess I call Mark and find out exactly what went wrong with this puzzle.